All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna fill in for the next for the next few minutes. I mentioned one of our speakers couldn't make it. The flight was really due to get the weather yesterday. So I'm gonna fill in, kind of touch upon some points and questions that were brought up in the demo session that we just saw from uh, from Jerry and Darren. And is, is Darren? Is Darren? I think Darren. I'll save I'll save the question for for Darren. But so what I want to do is kind of go back to service now. It's a, it's a kind of you know, common theme that we see in a lot of environments to kind of how do we leverage service now and or how do we bridge that gap between this process intense infrastructure leveraging service now or can be BMC remedy and you know, map that back with automation. So, you know, what they started to show in the last session was early Google system all the way down you know, integrating with ticketing systems under the cover, some type of automation, automation system. And so we'll, we'll kind of revisit that and kind of top down right now. Well, yeah, this isn't going to show the Google part again, but it'll just be the, the generic uh, ticketing that maps natively into automation systems like Ansible. But it could be it could be anything that, that may exist even already already in house. Thanks. Okay, cool. So, so what I want to show is you know, there is you know, some similar things that Darren was showing, but one of the things that I want to point out as a as a you know, subtle difference is looking at it from the perspective of the change request. And, you know, he mentioned there was some integrations to NetBox and Sources of Truth, but ServiceNow itself is, it has a CMDB, right? Oftentimes, it's not going to store config level data, although it could, but it's very common to try to use it for asset, track, asset tracking, at least knowing what devices are in inventory. So there's, so there's another demo that we have built in here Leveraging the ServiceNow database. Now, the great thing here is if we were to kind of look at the bottom left, we have the ability to add devices, right? So, if we were to if we were to add a device, there are some required fields, right? From credentials, from requiring the user to select things like the operating system, the site, and the network domain, right? So, even like a network domain to be able to say where where is this going to go? You can tell from the drop down. Uh, this is still heavily integrated to ServiceNow. And so the more data that we have in ServiceNow or in these systems, we can leverage to get more intelligent automation at a further step, which is what we'll see on managed on manage VLANs is the first requirement is a network domain. If you want to manage the campus or the data center as an example, so if we click network domain here and we just pick data center, now what we're going to see are, is just the devices that exist within the data center, right? In general, in the last demo, it was kind of doing a generic, it was doing a generic pull. So we actually saw, you know, one of those drop downs, you know, CSRs, you know, they had Juniper routers and switches, right? And again, all this is demo data, so there's a lot of flexibility with how to, how to use it. But this is, this is mapping directly into the ServiceNow database. So if you already have things like asset tracking within Within ServiceNow, that can be used as the foundation for triggering triggering a job. Now, the other subtle difference in this one, we'll say 200. You know, we'll just go with interop, interop mainland. We'll do it now. More nodes. The other option is this checkbox that wasn't selected before. Right? This is sort of a if we check it, it's a pre approved change for the demo. But oftentimes there are things like a safe change or standard change that happens so much that. The automation under the covers is built to map back to your enterprise standard. Right, so if we click this box, it'll run right now and make this change on the device. What Darren showed was it opened the change and then it was triggered when he leveraged Google Assistant. Now, what this demo is going to show is, is a slight deviation from that. This is a newer addition to, to uh, this demo rig. So let's make sure we're running around as good. I'll refresh this. Now, this is going to be slightly changed because what will happen is, it's my 20, it's just the latest one, let me just refresh one more time, I think it's 582. So let's open this ticket and what we're going to see inside of this ticket, just a little bit slow so I want to double check that everything, okay cool, so let's, Tell them they're a little slow. So what's going to happen right now? The job actually started, but it's only half of the job. 
Right, so the build process started. The build process we're referring to generating the configuration that we want to send to the device. So this is going to generate two commands for us, right, the mainline, the mainline command. Okay, so we can see that in our ticket notes, in service now, if we enlarge this a little bit, you can see in our ticket notes, we now have the property commands. At this point in time, we want an approver to come in. Right, now, the last demo was we just assumed the playbook under the coverage of Ansible was correct. Now we're saying we're generating this configuration. Now what we need to do within some more traditional ServiceNow setting is you notice this is an incognito tab. We're going to impersonate the user. We're going to impersonate and log in now as Fred Luddy. So Fred is our approver. Okay. So this could be your cab, your internal change review board, whoever it might be. So if we go to if we go to Fred's my approvals, we're going to see two that have to be approved. In theory, this should be two separate people. For the demo, we're just going to have Fred approve this twice. We log in here. We'll do the first approval for Fred. Click approve. Come back to our screen here. Requested. Fred will click approve again. Now at this point, you know, for again, Fred would have verified the commands look good before clicking approve. But at this point, this is the Ansible Tower server again. Now the second playbook is executing and going to deploy pre-built commands that were in the ticket. So at that point in time, again, Darren showed a lot of these notes in chat, but at the same time, we're going to get real-time updates directly into our ServiceNow ticket. Right? So we have a link even back to your Ansible server should you want to navigate. You know, if it's, maybe it's a non-technical person who can leverage uh, ServiceNow to just watch that ticket. You know, run in progress, run, run in real time. And the same exact output we saw a few minutes ago in chat, we're going to see directly in the ticket as well. Right, so this came in real time, so we're now, we now have our pre changed commands, say show VLAN brief for, for a VLAN, and we have the one you know, the default of one computer that was just previously deployed, and we're just getting the uptime to see a command diff. Right, so now the change is complete to the change. Of the, those two commands are now deployed. Now we're going to run our, our post change. And same exact philosophy. We're going to see the same two command outputs that we saw previously. And we're going to add one more subtle difference here. So post change. So we now see our change uh, took place. And we added one more addition for this demo, and that's, that's a diff. A generic, a generic uh, unit diff to see that. You know, again, a large, robust output that want to be a little bit more granular with, with what happened. So this is now being completed. This output now is coming to service now. It's coming in chat, wherever, wherever we want to get it. So this is one way that you can kind of bridge that gap to still have some sort of self-service. It could be for business users. It could be for network engineers. Request their tickets, and only when they're approved, then that job will get ticked off. There's a question earlier on rollback too. Right? So there's a question on, on rollback and you know, a question on a variety of things and uplinks and, and VLANs. All, the, all, the, all those is, you know, all those questions, honestly, yeah, it's, it's detail. It's like, that's what you control, right? You should never want to implement automation that you don't trust. But those are details that you want to be able to enter into the system somehow, right? Here, it could be through the playbook that's executed under the covers. Now, one thing I'll say in terms of being able to roll back, you want to start thinking differently by potentially designing for automation. And so what I'll show is just another quick example of leveraging ServiceNow. Just Tim will just say, any of this should work. So 24, that's the legacy, that mask. You know, let's just say, you know, going to Google. Or, okay, we'll just do some, something random. And let's just say internal interop, you know, Google DNS, you know, some notes here, and even more notes. And we can say it's pre approved. So, pre approved, this will run in real time against the Cisco ASA firewall. This, so, from this input, we're going to generate configuration to get deployed. So, if we click submit on this, again, all of this is going to map directly back. So we, what we're going to see now within a couple seconds is another job get kicked off that's going to generate security. Right, so this 
playbook is now running. And the same thing here we're going to see that we just saw previously, and that's the build process of generating the command set. Right, so if we have our firewall policy getting built, right below our nodes, the part that I want to focus on is the generation of things like object group names, policy names, you know, all that sort of thing. Right, firewalls and load balancers come up all the time. The two of the most popular things to automate because they have the most changes in a in a given environment. Now, one of the hardest things to do is to develop automation for firewalls leveraging current policy. Right, oftentimes current policy isn't documented. Right, and that's that's for that's for one of the main the main reason. But you know, try to ask you try to ask yourself or your coworker, how do you choose to augment the current policy, augment current object groups, create new groups, do things like a three to five tuple match, and that means you would want to augment a policy or should create a new policy. All of these things, usually conversation network engineers have gut feelings about. Right? And you know the truth is, you know, we can't, you know, we can't automate gut feelings, right, on which devices are going to be configured and how we're going to get configured. But if we scroll back down to see what happened here, we can see all the data we entered in the ticket was used to generate things like object group names and policy names, which makes it a lot easier to roll back this change, right? Which means if this change causes an issue, we can literally template out the commands to undo these commands. When you start getting into augmenting policies and object groups, it becomes very, very difficult to roll back things like push configurations, right? Based on device type, and functionality, and APIs, and all that. Right? So to keep in mind as you, as you start adopting automation, also consider newer standards for could be design, how you implement policy as an example. This goes for any feature, right? Layer two, layer three, up to up to layer seven. Okay. Alright, cool. So this is just you know another another service now demo. We're really looking at how to capture like the value of historical tracking, right? Always putting in the show commands for every change into a ticket and being able to execute that, all that from a service now. But the playbooks that you write into the covers or whatever tool that's used, you control what happens. Right? We could have said in a show command after the playbook runs, if something wasn't proper, then execute a conditional rollback. Right? So all that type of intelligence, you control. Right? You really never want to change some of your you know, business policy in terms of making it safe to deploy. Thank you.